Well, what's up everyone? I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're going to look at the Yi M1 Micro Four Thirds 4K camera. And that's coming right up. Well, today we're going to be looking at the Yi M1. Now, this camera actually came out in late 2016, but here it is, May of 2018. Now, I've had this camera for about four months, and I need to make one disclaimer right off the bat. I am not a professional photographer. Not at all. So, but what I do like about these type of cameras are, is their ability to shoot video. Now, this one here comes with a 12 to 40 millimeter lens on it. It will accept other Micro Four Third lenses. I've actually put the Micro Four Third lens from my Panasonic Lumix G7 on here and it worked just fine and vice versa. This lens actually works on the Lumix G7. But let's look at some of the features of this camera. It's got a very large screen on the back. Uh, navigation is very easy with the touchscreen menu on the back of the system. You've got all of these controls that you can actually work on the camera when it comes to ISO and adjusting EV value, uh, the focal length. All these things all can be adjusted and it's very easy to do just with a simple swipe of the back of the screen which makes it very intuitive and it makes it very easy. And I will say that the touch screen is very responsive on this camera. Now I left a little protective film on the back just because, you know, it keeps it from scratching up. But what I'm gonna show you today is just a couple of video examples and then a couple photo examples. Now I remember a while back I had a viewer that actually asked me if I could take a photo at 20 megapixel which is what's recommended, which is what the sensor is for this 20 megapixel, and then also 50 megapixels. So I'm gonna show those photos side by side. Now the 50 megapixel, of course, is interpolated. So keep that in mind. The audio has got two microphones at the top of the camera. And there was a couple things that I didn't like about this camera. And the first one was the little handle or the little strap gadgets on the side. I really don't like these things. Even with the little rubber that they put on them, it still gets picked up by the microphones. So I'm taking those dudes off. Never use the strap for a camera anyway. Even with the little plastic piece on there, they still rattle around and made a ton of noise. So you know, since I'm not gonna have this hanging around my neck, I went ahead and took those little strap holders right off because they were just making way too much noise. But you know, when you're looking at a Micro Four Thirds 4K capable camera and you think, hey, I can get this at 299 with the 12 to 40 millimeter lens and they do offer a 42 millimeter uh, lens where you can get a um, complete kit with the two lenses and the camera. I chose the one in silver because just to me, it just looked better to me than just a plain black because you know, I've got my Lumix G7 that's all black. Uh, all my Sony cameras are black. My uh, Canon cameras are all black. So I just thought I'd just go with something a little bit different. But I'm gonna show you a couple of video examples of how the camera shoots video 1080p at 60 frames a second now it does have image stabilization as they claim now this is working the latest firmware 3.1 on the camera and 1.1 on the lens the image stabilization is not fantastic this definitely requires either a steady cam type of uh, gimbal or a three axis gimbal and who knows maybe that kylum m from Snopa will be here and I can put that on there and kind of do a comparison test just to see but you know handheld is not that bad the stabilization but once you get in a 4k you've got absolutely no stabilization so tripod is definitely required unless you want to handhold it and have a little bit of a Blair Witch uh, project going but I'll just show you a couple of these video clips and then a couple of the still shots 
And, you know, it was kind of a love-hate relationship with this camera. When it first came in, I will tell you, I did not like it. The focus was horrible on it. And now, granted, it was running an older firmware, but I thought, oh my gosh, the focus, autofocus is just ridiculous on this thing. And I soon figured out that when you use face detection, if you're going to video, and you use face detection and you set it to single point autofocus instead of continuous autofocus, because the continue, uh, continuous autofocus, it will hunt. It will grab you, lock onto you, and then it will lock onto the background and it'll kind of hunt back and forth. But when you have it locked on you with single focus and face detection on, it will stay on you primarily for, I'd say a good 90% of the time, it stays dead on focus. And I'll even put a video link in the description right up here. I'll put a card to a video that I shot all primarily on the EM1 just to show that it can stay in focus, not difficultly. So anyway, here's a couple shots and then uh, we'll uh, come back and we'll talk a little bit more about this. What you doing? Swinging. Making a lot of creaky noises, isn't it? Don't get all hot and sweaty. Uh-huh. Yeah. Alright, 1080p at 60 frames a second. I'm just holding this handheld just to see how it does with uh, facial focus. So I've got face detection on. I'm going to try to hold the camera a little steady. One hand it's a little shaky. But just to see how it does. If it keeps me in focus versus the background. And then back to me just to see. Don't know. Alright, shooting in 4K, 30 frames a second. Handheld. There's no electronic image stabilization at 4K. takes the focus in and then see how we get a nice depth of feel once it gets focused. And like I said, this is just handheld just to give you a rough idea of what it looks like in 4K would be much better with a gimbal and definitely much better on a tripod but we'll zoom in a little bit zoom back out the lens uh, I will say that when it comes to zooming in and out on the CM1 it's not very smooth it feels a little bit on the gritty side I don't know if it's even making noise. Imagine that it is, but it just doesn't feel very smooth. Uh, my wife's Nikon D90, that thing is like, it's on ball bearings. It is super smooth. So all in all, what do I think about the EM1? I think for the money, it is a great entry level micro four thirds 4K handheld camera. I think that the pictures are nice. I don't think that they're outstanding. Uh, but then again, like I said, I'm not a professional photographer. Uh, I do like videography much better. Uh, but I think in video mode, the video is very acceptable. Um, especially if you're going to use 4K and you're going to put it on a tripod, then you can get the biggest bang for the buck out of this because I think the 4K video is very nice and very acceptable. Uh, but all in all, I mean, I like the camera. Like I said at the beginning, I had a love-hate relationship. I mean, I just really did not like this camera. But once I upgraded the firmware 
and started to learn some of the quirks because every camera has its quirk. And once I started learning some of the quirks of this camera, I started to like it more and more. It's very lightweight. It's not very large. I wouldn't mind putting a little pancake lens on the front rather than having this 12 to 40 millimeter. And that would even make it more concealable to be able to stick into your pocket or into a camera bag. Uh, but all in all, I mean, I like it. It's got a very unique little lens lock system that will not allow the camera to turn on unless you unlock the lens, which is a little, it's a little different. Nice little quarter 20 screw on the bottom. Battery drawer is very easy accessible. Uh, the SD card slot on the side is very accessible. It seems to be very well made. It, I'm six foot six and this actually still feels good in my hand even though it's a smaller camera. So all in all, I think for the money, it's not a bad camera. I think that it takes very good video. I think the photos are very nice. Now, if there's some pro professional photographers out there, I would like for you to chime in and tell me a little bit about what you can see with the images of what this camera produces and tell me, you know, if there's a lot of pixelation or how it's dealing with colors or just anything in general, because I'd like to kind of get your input uh, I'm actually going to be taking a uh, camera class for photos uh, here in the near future because I'd like to be able to explore that route. Now, my wife, she is definitely the family photographer when it comes to taking family photos. She takes three to 4,000 pictures a month of just our daughter, which is, I think, is crazy. But then again, here I am. I'm shooting 50 to 100 gigs of video a month of just our daughter. So uh, all in all, I like the EM1. I think it's a nice little camera. I'll put a product link in the description below. Right now it's like 349, but keep on clicking that link because I understand that here in the next couple of days, it's gonna be on sale again for 299 with the kit lens. And that's not too bad of a bargain, you know? Now it does come with a 900 milliamp per hour battery, which you would think normally when it comes to like action cameras, 900 milliamp per hour battery is not going to get you very far but with the em1 it actually lasts a decent amount of time so all in all do i give it like a powerful two thumbs up no but do i give it a thumbs up and a quarter thumbs up and a half yeah i sure do i don't i don't think it's that bad of a camera I, like i said i've had it for a couple of months and it's really grown on me it's not on the same level as the lumix g7 but, you know, you're comparing apples to oranges, and this is Yee's first attempt at a micro four-thirds camera and getting away from the action camera scene. So, for their first attempt, I can't say it's bad. I will say one thing, Yee, if you are listening, if you could squeeze just one more firmware, like a 3.2, to address the autofocus, so it's a little bit snappier and a little bit crisper and that it locks on the face detection a little bit better Then I think that all around that this will be a great camera. But I hope you guys have a great day. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe today. I've got more content coming up. And uh, if you have any comments about this video or any questions regarding this camera or any other cameras, please post them below because I do read every comment and I do respond to every comment. Hope you guys have yourself a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.